Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Derek Muller. I'm the Public Information Coordinator for Montgomery Township and the liaison for the Environmental Advisory Committee. Uh, tonight, we're here to present about weatherization. I'm going to turn it over to Ryan Rex, the chair of the EAC, to make the presentation. Hello, everybody. It's nice to be here. We're going to talk about weatherization and um, to help you save some money and some energy. So without further ado, let's begin the presentation. There it is, weatherization with our recycling sign inside the house, which I think is fun. Next slide, please. All right, what is weatherization? It is weatherization or weatherproofing that's a practice of optimizing home performance by mod modifying the structure's interior to reduce energy consumption. All right, so that was kind of a mouthful. What you're doing is you're fixing up your house to save energy and to make it more comfortable. Next slide, please. All right, there's a process that we go through to weatherize a home. First is the energy audit, which consists of blower door testing. Next is air sealing, followed by insulating. HVAC upgrades, lighting, and water saving. Next, please. All right, there's quite a few benefits. We have uh, an image here you can look at, but uh, the main ones are to reduce electrical costs, reduce uh, utility bills through heating, tax credits, which are always nice, increased property value, reduced energy dependence, reduced water consumption, and carbon footprint reduction. Next slide, please. All right, the energy audit. So that consists of checking, checking your home for carbon monoxide and gas leaks. Most important is health and safety. So that's what they will do first when they come into your house. An energy auditor will be someone that you reach out to through your utility company. We'll go over that later. Um, so first they come in and check health and safety. That's basically your HVAC systems and how they run. They do further testing on those systems to check for efficiency and what have you. Then they, uh, they check your attic and your basement for the level of insulation you already have. They connect the blower door. Um, and what this does is it pulls a negative pressure to help them figure out what air sealing measures are necessary to tighten up your home. Then they follow up with lighting recommendations and tricks for saving water. All right, the energy audit. Uh, this is a nice graphic. It gives you um, some bulletin points to see exactly what they're going to be talking about when they visit your home. Uh, they'll focus on insulation. And we discussed that sometimes in the walls, they can blow cellulose into the wall cavities if you have uh, cold spots in your house. If you have rooms over a garage, they can insulate the ceiling in the garage to make that room warmer. Of course, they will insulate in the attic, which is very important. Uh, they can upgrade your HVAC control system so you can monitor it while you're away from the house to make sure it doesn't run while you're not home to save energy and uh, quite a few other things. Next slide, please. All right, this is what a blower door looks like. Um, the guy or girl, female, male, who will be doing the blower door testing may not look like this, but this is basically the system that you will see. This connects to uh, your front door. And what they do is they check for air infiltration by pulling a negative pressure in your home. So uh, if you can picture the chimney effect, what this does is it pulls all the air through the, through the cracks and crevices in your home and forces it out. So cold air enters in the lower level in the basement and warm air pushes up through the roof. That's the actual chimney effect. That's what happens in the winter when your house is warm and cold air leaks in. If you drive around in the neighborhood, you can tell which houses are inefficient because some will have snow on the roofs and some will not. The ones that do not are the ones that are lacking insulation in the attics. So uh, that, that's a, a good indicator on, on how much heat is escaping through your, through your attic. Uh, normal points of entry that we can discuss are windows and doors. 
So replacing the windows and doors may not necessarily be the issue. It's actually stopping the air leaks around them and from underneath and what have you. Uh, sill plates, that, that's part of your construction framing. Penetrations to the outside, vents, pipes, wires, et cetera. Holes from the basement to the living space, uh, pipes, ducts, wires, any chases that you may have from the basement to the attic are a big problem. Next slide, please. All right, here's another graphic for blower door testing. I'm, I'm paying a lot of attention to this because it really does, uh, it really does make or break what what you know what you can and can't do in in your home. So this is this is a good indicator of how tight your structure is. So I just wanted to give you another graphic on that. Next slide, please. All right, air sealing. So. We kind of repeated some of the information on a couple, uh, you know, two slides back, but it's important enough that I wanted to drive it home. Um, one thing that is interesting about weatherization is that changing windows is not the best course of action unless you have single pane windows that are about 50 or 60 years old. Adding, um, you know, if you have if you have double pane windows with argon in the middle, if you go and spend like you know an extra twenty thousand dollars updating all these windows in your house, you might not feel that much of a difference because your current windows are probably R three or R four. Windows top of the line right now are about R five. One R value isn't going to change. What will change is your attic. If you have three inches or six inches of insulation and you add eighteen inches on top of that to achieve R thirty or better, that's where your savings come in. So I really wanted to, uh, you know, revisit this topic to to really explain further why why it's so important to do this. Next slide, please. All right, more about insulating. We talked about attics. We talked about basements. Oh nope, go back, please. All right, uh, floors R30 and attics, which I just mentioned. Tightening up any chase chase openings from the basement to the attic is very important. Uh, blown in cellulose is very good. That's actually what's going on in the picture right now. And if you see in the middle of that room he's spraying, there is a, a ruler and that's how you can tell how thick the insulation is. Most guys put that in there for you. Um, sometimes you can do spray foam. It, it's more expensive than cellulose, but it depends on what you're looking for for results and uh, affordability, what, what your budget will allow. Uh, crawl spaces need some more care. This is very important. Um, you have to waterproof your crawl space before you insulate it. Make sure there's a good vapor barrier on the floor and it has to actually uh, continue up the walls like 18 to 24 inches and it has to be sealed. Some pumps need to be installed to make sure the water does not sit and then you can do air sealing and then you can insulate. So it's very important that you pay attention to that. Next slide, please. All right, HVAC, a um, little more expensive of an investment. Uh, little uh, insulation is probably your quickest return on investment. It's typically two to four years. Uh, HVAC's a little more, but um, the quality of the systems now really helps with comfort. So that's a big, big topic here that you want you you really want to explore is the uh, the reliability and the comfort of your system. So your basic types of equipment that you can upgrade are furnaces, which blow hot air, boilers, which transfer water to radiators or baseboard, or your uh, domestic water heater. No efficiency under 80% will pass. So if you have an older unit and when they do the HVAC testing for the, um, um, uh, for the first step in the process during the evaluation, during the energy audit, the, the heater will fail and they will do uh, give you a recommendation. And most of the time, those recommendations will not be for another 80%. I highly recommend upgrading to a 90% or better. Um, carbon monoxide testing is always something that's done on HVAC systems during this process. That's for health and safety. Gas leak testing is also very important for health and safety. Um, draft testing for the chimney ensures that there's no carbon monoxide spillage into your basement. And uh, in this picture right here, you see a gentleman doing uh, duct testing. So they can tell uh, how well your ducts perform by how much air leaks through them and how well they're insulated. Next slide, please. 
All right, we're getting through toward the end. So electrical loads. One thing your energy auditor will do is they will check all the light bulbs and fixtures in your house. They'll make sure that you have replacement bulbs. Most people will give you bulbs. Uh, if you have regular incandescent or fluorescent, they will help you figure out how to change them quickly um, or possibly even give you a whole bunch of LEDs. And sometimes the utility companies are that generous. Uh, they will talk to you about phantom loads. They will identify electronics that are left on. If you have teenagers or kids or maybe even yourself who plays video games all the time and you leave those cable boxes on, those video games on, that continues to suck electricity. So. Sometimes they, they can provide you with the energy saving power strips. So if you hit the remote on the television, all the things connected to it will shut down, which is a big energy saver. We use those in my house. Next slide, please. All right, water savings. My favorite topic because I'm a plumber. Ha -ha. So water savings, update aerators. Make sure you have those aerators in and they are flowing well. It's not really hard to change them. A lot of the uh, energy auditors will do it for you or they can uh, let you know what type of aerators you need. Shower heads are also a big offender for water savings. So they, they, they can provide you with uh, more efficient shower heads. Now, repairing leaking faucets or toilets. This is a big one for water waste. So water usage, water waste, whatever. This is what drives up your water costs per month. So if all of a sudden you, you see your water bill shoot up, you know, $50, it's probably because the toilet's running or faucet's leaking. So you want to repair them or replace them. Install a rain barrel to decrease the need for using a hose when watering gardens. This will also help with stormwater management, which is another topic we will be discussing soon. Next slide, please. OK, that is actually the end of our presentation. I hope I didn't inundate everybody with information, but um, it is a dense topic. It is a lot to explore, but it's 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 well worth the opportunity for uh, to improve your home. So savings is big, but comfort's also big. So if your house is uncomfortable, your house is drafty, and you have cold spots, it's probably because it, it could be uh, it could be upgraded a little bit. And reaching out to an energy auditor is a great start. I would highly recommend doing that before contacting an HVAC guy or doing insulation upgrades. That way, you know your your utility company can provide you with with good contacts to to uh, pursue that further. They are very reliable and, and may even give you an energy audit for free, depending on what they're offering. So that's that's a really solid first step is reaching out to a utility company to see what, you know, what, what path you should follow. Highly recommended. How much does an energy audit usually cost from David Creevo? OK, so utility companies used to charge. Um, I think when I got mine done five years ago, I think I paid one hundred and fifty dollars, but then they had uh, incentive programs where they were free. Uh, if you reach out to an engineer, like somebody who, who, who is a mechanical engineer, it might cost you over $500. If you reach out to uh, an energy auditor who's licensed um, for the, uh, um, who's, who's a licensed auditor, I can't remember the, the exact name of the licensure at the, at the moment, but um, they can sometimes cost between two and four hundred dollars. So that's why I'm recommending the utility company because they are very reasonable and uh, very professional when it comes to energy auditing. Uh, Ryan, this question here as well. It's a uh, do you recommend an attic fan to help push out the hot air in the attic? Um, yes, but I also recommend I mean, I, I recommend insulating uh, as number one. Because if you have an attic fan, then you're always going to have that air flowing from. Um, so if you have an attic fan, you're trying to solve the issue of of it being too hot in your house, which means a couple of things. One, your air conditioning system is non existent or it's not working correctly. And two, um, you need better insulation. So if you if you tighten up your house and and uh, you know, you can minimize the airflow. You can minimize the amount of heat that gets in during the summertime because of good insulation, keeping the cool air inside. Um, I, I would I would take that route before putting in an attic fan. 
if there are any other questions, please feel free to type them into the chat. Um, I believe you can also unmute yourself. So if any committee members want to weigh in, you're welcome to do so at this time as well. And we can also go back to any slides they might need to see again. I know some people did come in a little bit late. Can there be too much insulation? Um, there are, I don't know that too much insulation is a bad thing. I mean, most guys, if if so, if a, if if somebody who doesn't know insulation goes into their attic and puts, you know, six levels of of you know, six inch insulation and 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 what have you, I mean, you, there's nothing that's going. I mean, maybe the weight of it would harm something and possibly pop some nails in the drywall, but most licensed uh, insulation people w would not. They would know where to stop. Like R30 is where you would stop. Like that's the that's pretty much the, the industry standard for efficiency right now. You know, in walls, you can only get so much insulation. You know, in an outer wall, you have it's two by four structures. So you have that much space in between the studs and you know the drywall and the exterior of the home. So you can only get so much insulation there before the drywall would pop. So most times you, you are limited to the amount that you can put in anyway. Any more questions? Uh, there's another slide, Derek, if you want to click to it. Yeah, absolutely. While you're doing that, I'm also going to check the attendance. Just make sure we didn't miss any uh, questions that were asked on the registration form as well. OK. We can go ahead and explain this, this slide here. All right, here's some good, good links for information. Um, the first one's the Weatherization Assistance Program. I used to work for a nonprofit in Philly uh, that focused on providing this system to uh, low income families and it, it 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 helped considerably you know it, it the good people at the nonprofit i was working with they chip away daily just one house at a time just doing this but that's the point of the project um if you click on that on that link in this presentation when it's available it'll take you to the uh pardon me it'll take you to the website and and you can really learn a lot like you may not qualify for for the uh the program but there's a decent amount of information on there to set you on the right path um, for what to look for, that is. All right, also the Pennsylvania Weatherization Task Force. Again, this is similar to the first bullet point. Um, it, really, it, it starts to tap into elderly residents and, and some additional, some additional uh, programs that are available there. But again, it's just a really nice resource to give you um, to give you a lot of information on on what's important uh, to get this process to you know to to perform to make your house perform better, and then last but not least, I'm sure everybody around here has Pico. This is our utility company. There is a minimal audit fee. I don't know if there's anything. I don't know what it is these days, but I can I can pretty much guarantee it's affordable and it's worth it. Um, they will provide a comprehensive list of measures for your home following the audit, and they will provide uh, a list of contractors for you to follow. We as, as uh, representatives of the township cannot give you anything further than, than uh, these recommendations, but if you do go to the utility company, they, they, can, they can provide those extra steps. So it's, it's important to, to follow that route. Um, so that is all I have. That is the last page of the presentation. I hope it was informative. And I hope I helped everybody, uh, you know, figure out what 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 they may or may not be able to do with their homes. And uh, this is, you know, we're 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 in a nicer area. A lot of people, you know, don't have to don't have to worry about energy savings because it's not, you know, something that's on the tip of their, you know, on the top of their list. But I think that for people like us, comfort is a really big thing. You know, if we walk around our house and, and we're, we're shivering in the wintertime, there's there's a draft somewhere. And, you know, I would want to get that draft fixed. And at the end of the day, it is nice to spend $100 on your utility bill instead of $200. So it's terrific. And uh, Ryan, we have one more question come in. Um, what can I talk about Halley Edge in a sec? It says, are there certain brands of windows you would recommend over others? Or should you stick with name brand? Um, we can't recommend specific brands necessarily, but even advice on window types. 
The only thing I'm going to say about Windows, we're not going to talk about brands, we can't talk about companies, but what we can talk about is R value. So I would try to find uh, a window with the highest R value possible. And I think right now that's an R5. I don't think there's anything better than that. So if anyone on this uh, on this call or listening can figure out how to make an R30 window, we're all going to be billionaires overnight. So share the wealth is all I got to say. <laughs> and I see Maureen, you have a hand up. Yeah, Ryan. You know First off, thank you so much. I thought that was excellent and incredibly informative. Thanks, and I'm you. wondering if I want to circle back and check out some of your references here for weatherization. Is this this slide or this information going to be available after the presentation? Derek? It will be. Um, so we have an EAC webpage, and we'll also send out the link to this presentation as it was presented, as well as the PowerPoint slides. So you can click the links as well. I will send that to everyone who registered for this um, webinar through email in, in addition to posting on the website. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Derek, and for clicking through the slides for me. Um, I didn't know how much usability I had, but this is actually a really nice system for us to use when we when we do this. Yeah, and as we keep exploring them, we'll, I'm sure we'll find more efficient ways to use it too. Yeah. But yeah, thanks for doing that, Ryan. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. So I just want to make sure there's no last minute questions before we continue on with our regular scheduled EAC meeting. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, you're welcome to stay. We are going to talk about a few more matters here just as a committee. Um, it's a public meeting, but thank you for joining us for the presentation. You.